We'll start today with a refresher of what we were doing the last time we met in class, and that was the half angles. We're going to get into the double angles, um, so we'll move back into the sheet, and I'll have your um, formulas available for you or your identities available for you to copy down. But let's just kind of get our brain going and remember what we were doing. Um, Remember, I'm just manipulating, I'm moving things around, I'm trying to find the value, and I'm doing so by using an identity. So the first thing that I have to do is figure out which identity I want to use. And I'm going to be using the sine half angle identity, and that came from what it said, find, find the sine of theta over 2. So I chose the sine half angle identity, that went back to my first page, the sine half angle identity. It says alpha in here, but the equation or the what we're solving for is theta. That's just a variable and that can change all the time. So I'm using theta in the formula. Remember, I need to use the cosine of theta in order to find this, but they gave me the tangent of theta. So I'm going to draw a right triangle and label tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Remember, don't worry about that negative there. That negative is there because theta is, we were told, theta is in the fourth quadrant. And tangent in the fourth quadrant is negative. So it's not like I want to say the 4 is negative or the 3 is negative. I just know that the tangent itself is negative. When we're labeling our triangle, those are just measurements of sides and the measurements are always going to be positive distances or lengths. So this should look familiar at 3, 4, 5. We've seen those a lot. We are going to get into some that maybe aren't as obvious. If you took a picture of the Pythagorean triples in class, you can pull that out on your phone and take a look at it because um, we'll get into some other kinds and we might even get into somewhere we're actually going to have to do the Pythagorean theorem. It's not actually a triple up there. So anyways, I'm here, and I'm going to use this triangle to find the cosine. And so the cosine of theta on this picture is 3 fifths. Because I'm in the fourth quadrant, the cosine is positive, so my 3 fifths is positive. So when I use this identity, it's plus minus 1 minus 3 fifths over 2. And I just have to go ahead and do the math. On your assignment, some of them came out um, with some heftier values, and that's going to happen. And again, we're going to see some of those as we work through today. It's not always going to come out super nice looking. Even when we were doing them last time, we had some that had radicals left in them, and that's normal. Okay, Just do the math and, and obviously do it correctly. So this is 1 or 5 fifths minus 3 fifths. 5 fifths minus 3 fifths is 2 fifths over 2. Put that as 2 over 1, multiply by 1 half, multiply by 1 half on the top and on the bottom. Remember, that's multiplying by the same thing. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value, just the look, and so that gets rid of that denominator. So I'm left with plus or minus the square root of 2's cancel out 1 over 5, which is the square root of 1 or 1 over the square root of 5, plus or minus. Rationalize my denominator, I have plus or minus the square root of 5 over 5. Now I need to figure out if it's positive or negative, and so this is always my last step, and I only have to do this step if I use one of these identities that has a radical in it and a plus minus in front. If I don't use that, and you're going to see in the double angles, none of them have that, so we don't have to do that final step. The sign will work its way out. I do have to work through it up here making sure that's why they tell me where I am. That's why they tell me where I'm looking at, because then I can figure out what the sign of my trig function is. Right here, I need to do that final step because I am cutting the angle in half, and I'm going to land somewhere I don't know. I need to decide whether it's positive or negative. So I'll take that 3 pi over 2, less than or equal to theta, less than 2 pi, and I'll cut everything in half. That gives me 3 pi over 4 is less than or equal to theta over 2, which is less than or equal to pi. And that looks like that is in the second quadrant. And second quadrant is negative positive. I was trying to find the sine that came from here. Find the sine. The sine is positive. 
in the second quadrant and therefore I only care about the positive answer. My answer is square root of 5 over 5. All right, so let's go back. I'm going to have you pause the video and get the double angle formulas down. Um, notice the cosine double angle has a couple of variations and that's because of the identities that we worked with in the last chapter. If you recall that cosine squared was 1 minus sine squared. We could write that variation. That was one of those identities on that back page of your yellow packet. And so they replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared and then rewrite it in a variation that only has sine in it. Likewise, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared and so they replace sine squared with cosine squared and then write a variation that only has cosine squared in it. So there are going to be instances where for the double angle for cosine, I have my choice of which um, identity to use. And I'm going to use the one that's going to be the easiest. Maybe it, I'm given Co I'm given cosine already, so why wouldn't I use the one with just cosine in it? Or maybe I'm given sine, so why wouldn't I use the one with just sine in it? There are other times that maybe I'm given tangent, well then I can use any of these because I just have to figure out which one it is. So if you didn't get all those copied down, um, please pause the video now and get all these identities down. Uh, and we're going to jump over to the um, next problem on our note packet. So we are on the problem number 6. I have the sine theta is 5 over 17. Right here, it's where pi over 2 is less than or equal to theta is less than pi. So I know I'm in the second quadrant. Second quadrant has a negative um, cosine and a positive sine. My job is to find the cosine double angle. So I'll pick the cosine double angle identity that I want to use. And remember, I said when we were starting, there are some times when we are given um, a value that will sort of direct us to a particular one, a particular identity to use. And if you um, noticed on that problem, it gave me sine. So I can use the identity that has sine in it. That's sort of a luxury of the cosine double angle that I don't have for sine and tangent. So I'm going to use the 1 minus sine squared theta. Oops, I better make sure I wrote that down. I don't think I did. It's 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. I knew it was wrong right away when I was writing it. So get that. 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Now, if you remember when we were doing those half angles, we had to draw the picture of the triangle. And I have to do that if I need to find a different trig function that's in the identity that I'm using. But in this case, I already have the trig function that I'm using. And so I don't have to draw the triangle. And so me knowing that it's in the second quadrant isn't necessary because I already know the sign is positive. It's going to go in here. This is 1 minus 2 times 15 seventeenths squared. And then it's really just a matter of evaluating that fraction. And so however you need to do that, um, evaluate that fraction, you can plug it in your calculator or um, you know, can want to challenge yourself, do it step by step. I'm going to do 225 over 17 squared, which is 289. And I'll multiply 2 times that ugly fraction, which was 225. 2 times 225 over 289. Okay, mine got an error um, because I
Uh, okay, I better plug, plug it all in again. Sorry, my calculator, I messed up when I was plugging it in. So it's 2 times the 225 over the 289. And finally, it took me long enough, hey? I have 1 minus, I like to keep it improper, so I'm going to make sure that that's an improper fraction, so 450 over 289, and then I can do that subtraction, and I would end up with negative 161 over 289. Okay, so that's just me evaluating. Now from here on out, I'm going to pause the video and evaluate, and then you can evaluate on your own or double check your work, because really it's just a matter of calculating, and however you need to do your calculations is up to you. But we don't need to waste air time listening to me punch something in a calculator. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next one. And I have the tangent double, double angle, so I have to figure out the um, identity that I want to use. And that one is tangent 2 theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. I have the sine. In order to do this, I need the tangent. I am in the third quadrant, which is negative, negative values. That's why the sine is negative. I draw my triangle. Here's my theta, opposite over hypotenuse, a 3, 4, 5 again. And the tangent of theta then is 4 thirds. It is positive because in the third quadrant, the tangent is positive. And that's, again, why they give us this information. So I just have to plug this in. Oh, my goodness. What is my issue here, hey? So I need to back that up and rewrite that to write that. That's 2 tangent theta. Go back and make sure I wrote it right here. Yeah, I did. I just wrote it wrong there. One of those days. So back to this problem. Here we are. When I plug that in, I get 2 times 4 thirds over 1 minus 4 thirds squared. Again. I'm going to pause the video and calculate and be back in a bit. Welcome back. Um, so I ended up with negative 24 over 21 when I was done. Um, moving on, we're just going to kind of cruise through these. Again, it's a matter of picking the right formula, drawing your picture, and plugging it in. Again, we're going to have some instances, like in problem number 6, where um, if you look at that, that might freak you out a little bit, but um, it's it works the exact same way. It's just that when I set up my triangle, I'm not going to have one of my Pythagorean triples, and so I'll have to deal with it that way, okay? So this is the sine double angle. So again, I go back and figure out the um, identity that I want to use, two sine, cosine. Oops. So I'm going to do use 2 sine theta, cosine theta. And I need both sine and cosine. I have the sine, so I need to find the cosine. I'm here in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, the cosine is positive, but the sine is negative. I already see that the sine is negative. I'll draw my picture again. Here's theta. Cosine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, not a Pythagorean triple, so I'm going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this. So the square root of 3 squared plus the unknown side squared equals 6 squared. So that is 3 plus x squared equals 36. So x squared equals the square root of, sorry, not the square root yet, x squared equals 33, so x is the square root of 33. So my missing side is the square root of 33, and therefore my cosine is positive square root of 33 over 6. And now I can plug this in. This is 2 times negative square root of 3 over 6 times the square root of 33 over 6. And then I just go ahead and 
evaluate. When I have these in these radicals like this, I can just multiply the radicals together. I can't add them together, but I can multiply them. So this is 2 times negative square root of 99 over 36. And then I can just go ahead and I'll continue to simplify. I will cancel that. I have negative square root of 99 over 18. I notice I can pull a 9 out of here, so that is 3 times the square root of 11. It's still negative over 18, okay, because this was 9 times 11, and the square root of 9 is 3. 3 times the square root of 11 over 18, that leaves me with negative square root of 11 over 6 for my final answer. Down to another one where I have a cosine double angle. The cosine double angle, I have my choice. Again, I'm given sine, so I am going to choose the sine, the equation that deals with only sine. Okay, I'm going to have you guys, again, pause the video, try this problem. We'll revisit um, when you're finished. When I was done, I got negative 7 over 25. And... Um, Again, I showed my work there, so if you need to pause and look and see what happened, if something didn't work out for you, um, leave it as a question for when we meet again, okay? All right, so here's our final one, tangent double angle again. And again, at this point, if you want to um, pause the video, pick the um, function that you're going to use or the identity that you're going to use, pause the video, work through, see how you do, and then we can meet back up um, when you are finished. You probably recognize that that one looked very similar to the previous tangent double angle, angle that we did. And again, you're going to see some things kind of show up again. Um, keep in mind that some of the numbers can get a little um, uglier than, than some of the ones that we've done here. Um, but uh, the math should all be pretty okay-ish. I mean, obviously, you can use your calculator to work through those problems. So your job is to do those other two for homework that we didn't do, um, and then finish whatever homework you didn't do up to that point. So that is, I'm just looking through the packet trying to find it. Um, uh, you should do problems 21 and 22. So problem 21 and 22, and then again, work on any um, of the rest of the evens or odds that you didn't do. So 21 and 22 is your official assignment. Again, you do have a quiz when we meet again, and the quiz is going to be on the angle sum, angle difference, and the half angles. So the double angles are not going to be on there. But come with questions before you take your quiz, and then we'll um, do your quiz and then move on to the last section in Chapter 4.